The real science of muscle growth. I think a lot of people overcomplicate the process of building muscle and building strength. The key factor when it comes to building muscle is progressive overload. And this is a simple concept and I'm sure many of you watching this who train know what I'm talking about when I, when I say that, but for anybody who doesn't know what progressive overload is, it is essentially just lifting heavier loads over a period of time, progressively increasing your weight. So if you're benching 100 kilos for five reps of five sets, you get to the point where you do that. The next time you come in, you do 102 kilos for five sets of five reps. That is progressive overload. And that is hands down the most effective means of building muscle hypertrophy hypertrophy is the scientific term for muscle growth it is the most effective means of building muscle and strength now obviously there's other factors that come into play but i'm going to talk about the real sense of muscle growth and it is this video is going to be centered on progressive overload because it is hands down the most effective means now you can go out there and shoot all sorts of shit up your ass and like build fake beach muscles because you're taking steroids but this video is for people who want to build muscle naturally and through the most effective means which is progressive overload so another pitfall people often fall into when it comes to building muscle is to get preoccupied with this notion this fallacy falsehood of i need to get a pump in order to build muscle Right, so essentially what a pump is, a pump is blood being trapped in your muscles and it might look good in the mirror, you might look a wee bit bigger in the gym and then it goes down, but like nonetheless it does not really play any real significant role in building muscle. And another thing that people get wrapped up on is, oh I need to get the burn bro, I need to fucking burn my muscles, I need to feel sore. I need to feel sore in order to know that I had a good workout today, that I'm actually going to make gains here. No. What that is, is a fucking knuckle dragger approach. That is just, I'm going to train hard as fuck and I think I'm going to get optimum results here. But the reality is, no. The reality is, if you train smart, train smarter, not harder, that is the key to obtaining optimal results, not just when it comes to building muscle, but when it comes to achieving fat loss, improving your cardiovascular health, and all the other parameters of health and fitness. It is being smarter with your training, not training harder to the point where you burn yourself out and just end up crashing and not having the drive and the motivation to continue training because you simply train too hard. You took the fun out of the training because you train too hard. So it's learning to be, to be smarter with your training. And for me, I mean, there is conflicting evidence what is the best rep range to enable optimal muscle growth. There is an interesting meta-analysis of a study done by Arizona State University, which, which came to the conclusion that Essentially, if you perform four to six reps at 80% of your one rep max, your one RM, that, is, that has been found to be the most effective re rep range uh, and intensity, intensity being the one rep max, the 80% of your one, one rep max, that, is, that was found to be the most effective for people who train regularly. Now for beginners, it might be a wee bit different, but that is a good wee signpost when it comes to trying to figure out what would be the ideal rep range to build muscle and the ideal intensity as well. You can play about, like I have honestly made gains. I've built muscle doing different rep ranges, different intensities. I mean, I have built muscle doing powerlifting style training where the intensity was 90% to 95% of my one rep max and i've also built muscle at the lower intensity ranges of 70 percent up to 80 percent and everything in between i think another fundamental factor behind muscle growth and it applies also to anything that you pursue in life is consistency consistently training consistently showing up to the gym 
uh, at the minute your homework is I'm putting the work in and you will see results over time it's something I talk about I've talked about before it's like smacking your head against the wall persistence resistance is merely resistance and persistence you just have to keep persistent and keep smacking that head against the wall and you will make cracks and you will start to see results honestly i've been training for 10 years and it can be extremely frustrating at times whenever you maybe only gain like half a pound of muscle every month and as a natural that is the point i'm at now where i'm lucky if i gain honestly a few pounds of muscle a year and you know it's important to to enjoy the process of building muscle, losing fat, getting fitter, because the more you do it, the more consistent you you are with your training, you will learn to love the process and that is the key to ensuring long-term drive and motivation. So in terms of other things when it comes to muscle growth, obviously muscles do not grow without proper nutrition and people often ask so what, how important is nutrition geez i mean for me it's a hundred percent it's a hundred percent now people will say oh, well no it's it's only 70 percent to 80 percent of your results yet that is technically true but when you really think about it it is fucking a hundred percent how important is training it's a hundred percent how important is stress management it's a hundred percent how important is mindset? It's a hundred percent. How important is hydration? It's a hundred percent. It all fucking matters because it all adds up. It is all it all incrementally adds up. If you want to achieve extraordinary results, if you want to achieve optimum results, you have to make sure all these factors are worked towards and optimized. There's no doubt about it. So nutrition is imperative when it comes to muscle growth. Obviously, ensuring your optimum protein intake, you know, you're going to try and aim for about a pound of protein per, being, being liberal here, per pound of body weight. So if you're, I'm 185 pounds, so I would aim for about 185 pounds of protein. But at the end of the day, see if I don't hit that, see if I only eat 160 pounds of, pro, uh, of protein a day, or sorry, 160 grams of protein a day. I don't fucking cry about it. I don't think, oh my god, that's it. I'm not actually gonna. I'm not gonna make any gains today. I'm not gonna repair and help my muscles regrow. No. As long as you are consistently hitting the mark, you're cons you're not under eating your protein. Like I mean, honestly, as long as you're getting over a hundred grams of protein, it doesn't really matter. Unless you like, you're quite heavy. It doesn't really matter. You should be. You'd be surprised about how much protein, how much little protein you actually need. In order to facilitate muscle growth so yeah all the factors will touch on hydration making sure you drink enough water is imperative as well and um, depending on the diet like ensuring you have an optimum amount of carbohydrates to fuel your workouts and fats to ensure optimum hormonal to ensure you have, a, have an optimal hormonal profile for men obviously eating enough fat to ensure you have testosterone women as well for estrogen and probably I mean, for me, the most important factor of all and the thing that underpins everything else is fucking sleep. Sleep is so important when it comes to not just muscle growth, but nearly every vital, essential bodily function. If you're not getting optimal sleep at night, you're literally fucking taking years off your life and increasing your risks of obtaining really nasty sinister diseases like cancer heart disease you're increasing your chances of getting them later on down the line in life so do not fucking compromise on your sleep do not shirk the responsibility and obligation you have to yourself to get optimal sleep i cannot stress that enough honestly sleep is so important it is so important and for me if you were to see like optimal health and wellness as a as a pyramid at the base of that pyramid, I would literally put sleep, then I would put nutrition, then I would put training, and then towards the top, I'd put like little things like supplementation and things like that. That's what I would put in my pyramid. I think sleep is so important, and there's a couple of resources you can go to to learn more about sleep. Your guy, Dr. Matthew Walker, on Joe Rogan's podcast, he's, he's great, and then Dr. Shawn Michael as well. Um, he is also great for that. 
when it comes to just learning more about sleep and the importance of sleep. So to recap, what are the keys to building muscle? Number one, progressive overload, ensuring that you're consistently and progressively increasing the loads and intensities with which you're lifting. Uh, number two, proper nutrition. Ensuring you're getting ample protein intake. Ensuring you're, you're getting ample calories as well. I forgot to assert that. Making sure that you're getting enough calories and not just enough protein, but calories. Making sure if you're a wee skinny bastard like I was, like I, I used to weigh nine stone and now I've bulked myself up to 13 stone. I just had to eat more and lift heavy shit. As simple as that. Now, obviously, for other people, it might be a wee bit more complicated. You might have to lose a wee bit of body fat, and then you build up. But nonetheless, calories is king when it comes to building muscle, losing fat. So make sure you're consistently tracking your calories. That is imperative. And then the third and final point that I'm gonna just recap on when it comes to ensuring optimal muscle growth is sleep. Your muscles grow outside the gym, your muscles grow outside your workouts, so make sure that you are sleeping, getting eight or eight, at least seven hours sleep, but maybe ideally eight to nine, depending on how active you are. People who are more active, people who are more athletic, could need upwards of nine hours sleep, so do not fucking shirk the responsibility of getting enough sleep. Do not compromise on your sleep, and trust me, you'll thank me for it, for how much better you feel. And... Uh, yeah, that is it. And managing your stress as well is imperative. That can be done through meditation, mindfulness, breath work, um, gratitude practice, just ensuring that you're not stressing the fuck out because you don't want your cortisol levels to be through the roof and that will just hinder your gains and hinder your muscle growth. So, for guys and girls out there, this has been my tips to optimize muscle growth and the real science of muscle growth. So thank you all for watching and I appreciate it. Love you all.